Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another kind of newsy, vloggy, updatey thing. Before I get to the strategy news, if you haven't noticed it already, uh, I'm part of the Players Network, and over on their channel, they just posted a, f a set of four videos called The Four Players that is some sort of weirdly, awesomely disturbing kind of modern-day live-action remake of, like, Mario Brothers people. There's four videos, one's for Mario, Luigi, one's for Toad, and one's for the Princess. And uh, they're worth taking a look at if you haven't done it already. They're, they're strange. They're really weird. Uh, there's going to be an annotation somewhere on the screen right now to point you to probably the Toad one. Uh, and uh, you can check out the others over there on the channel. Links will be in the description box as well. Really, really weird. It's by, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Evan... Dowerty, something like that. He's um, he's the guy who wrote um, the uh, the Snow White and the Huntsman and the uh, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Like this is an actual Hollywood guy, and they just made these four little short things. Anyway, I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, moving on to strategy news. First of all, uh, the Europa Universalis 4 expansion pack, Conquest of Paradise, that was scheduled to come out uh, sometime at the end of 2013 here, either November or December, has been pushed back to January to get a little bit more polish. Uh, Paradox has been doing that a lot more lately, where they want to release things with as much polish as they can put in, and I guess, you know, we can't complain about things being good, but damn it, I wanted it now. Um, just in case you, you haven't been up to it, so Conquest of Paradise will add mostly stuff that has to do with colonization. Uh, it has the option of adding randomized Americas, North and South America, so that way it gives you more of a kind of an exploration kind of thing when you go to the New World finally. Also, they're introducing colonial governments, which means that uh, instead of having the provinces in the New World directly owned by you, although you can still do that, but you, what you can do is you can sort of spawn off these, these vassal nations, but they're a special colony type of nation uh, under you. And uh, that way they sort of run themselves and they can do a little bit more things automatically. Uh, unlike vassals, they can declare war, but only against other colonies and also natives. Um, so they've got uh, some kind of autonomy, but in another way they're sort of a vassal and I'm really going to enjoy playing with that mechanic as well. Also if you want to play a First Nations uh, nation, first of all there's more of them. Uh, they've added more uh, North and South American sort of tribal government types or, or nation types and uh, they've added a lot more mechanics because right now in the game if you were to play as one of them you don't have a whole lot to do. Um, your technology comes in so slowly you don't have anything to build you don't really have that many actions you can take unless you have a direct neighbor you can go to war with. So what they're doing is they're adding a lot more early game stuff for First Nations tribes uh, and that will include things like um, buildings, un special unique buildings that only they have access to that they can build at the low tech levels. Also, if you're a one province nation, you can actually migrate from one province to another. And it's on a cooldown, but every time you do it, you earn a whole bunch of monarch points and a few different effects and things. So you can sort of regularly move your way around as you... Uh, as, as you play the uh, the migrant thing, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, the other news from Paradox that's worth mentioning is, uh, if, in case you haven't been up and up, the Sons of Abraham expansion pack for Crusader Kings 2 is coming out on November 18th. That's just in a couple of days from when I'm recording this. And this is going to add a lot more religious gameplay. I mean, Crusader Kings 2 has been out for a while, and it is still so popular and so loved by well, everyone, but also Paradox themselves, that they're keeping to work on this, these sort of DLC expansion things, and I think they're quite cool. Uh, one of the complaints about CK2 is that perhaps the religious aspect uh, was not still not quite as fully fleshed out as it could be, especially back on the Christian side, because, uh, or, the you know, the sort of, um, I guess, the, the Catholic and Orthodox side, because they have added uh, specific expansions for other religions that have added a lot more sort of events and depth. And one of the things a lot of people ask for is, oh, I want the ability to play as the Pope, which Paradox has said that will never happen, because uh, the Pope just basically gets spanned with, like, infinite events every turn, so it's not really the sort of experience that works as a human player. But, so what has been added? First of all, uh, and again, this is Crusader Kings 2. In uh, Sons of Abraham, you have the ability to have more control over the Pope uh, because they've added a College of Cardinals. Uh, and that can be people that you, you sort of bring in and sponsor from your own kind of kingdom. Uh, I believe just like, the, um, just like in the Merchant Republics, 
older people, more prestigious and, well, I guess pious people, uh, get, will get more favor for the College of Cardinals. So um, you don't necessarily want to sponsor a 20-year-old, for example. He probably won't have a whole lot of influence overall. Uh, but yeah, you can get a little bit more influence with the Pope. You can ask the Pope for a variety of like favors and money. Uh, but what's also cool is, finally, and a lot of people have been asking this for a really long time, they have added Judaism. There will be Jews in the world now, finally. In fact, you can even play as a Jewish lord, you know, a Jewish count and, and, and duke and king. Uh, and even uh, you can actually restore the kingdom of Israel, which I'm sure won't cause any controversy in the comments ever, ever, ever. Uh, but it, you know, it's something that people have asked for for a really long time. Uh, there's a few different things in terms of uh, how they can move around. There's also pilgrimages for, um, well, everyone. I mean, you know, there can be Christian pilgrimages and, and that sort of thing. And I think those mechanics are all going to tie in to a certain extent. Uh, you can even interact with holy orders a little bit more than you could before, uh, and and sort of have them help them grow their influence. Uh, which so all these sort of religiousy sort of extra gameplay features are sure be cool. Uh, in Islam, there are different sects that uh, spawn, sort of these subsects that come out, and you can support one side or another, and they have slightly different mechanics, and uh, lots and lots and lots of new religious events. So, if you like the religious side of history, and frankly, a lot of history, especially in that period, was driven by religion, so I think it's going to add a lot more interesting flavor uh, to the game that's really, uh, I don't know, I think think it's going to fill in a few gaps here and there. I mean, personally, these days, I'm still more about EU4. I'm enjoying that a lot more, and it fits in a little bit better with some of my playstyle, but I will definitely have to check out Sons of Abraham at, in CK2. I don't know if there'll be a Let's Play or anything like that, but uh, I, I'm definitely going to have to fiddle with it a little bit. And I think that's the big gaming news I want to cover. In terms of the channel, I'm still trying to rework my own personal schedule to try to get more time dedicated to live streaming and uh, just, you know, even out the set of uh, video releases per week as well. Just trying to reorganize how I sort through my life to make sure that A, I don't go crazy and B, I can keep making as many videos as possible. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, in December, so this is still a month away, but uh, do mark your calendar because on the weekend of, uh, let's see, December, Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th, Sunday the 15th, those three days, that is the next Ludum Dare, which is a 48-hour game programming competition, and that will be live streamed from start to finish. I will be making a game from scratch for a competition, live streaming the whole thing, so make sure to mark that down on your calendar. And I think that's all the updates for this week. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.